Hi, I'm Mr. Mullaney. This is a lesson recap of our lesson, The Guns of August, the beginning of World War I. We spent a lot of time on the beginning and the first events of World War I for short. All right, our objectives for this lesson, talk about early events in the war, strategies, battles, and outcomes, and what we're really getting at as far as strategies. Uh, and battles, we'll talk a little bit in class today, not so much on this deck, um, and more as we go. When we talk about uh, strategies, we're talking about one specific strategy at the very start that is going to cause other countries to join the war. You'll see that in a minute. All right, so warm up long-term causes. Again, we just wanna keep on hitting these hard because you need to know them, your mania militarism, alliances, imperialism, nationalism, and international anarchy, mania. All right, so the so those are long-term causes. If you're asked what is the actual event that starts it, you need to say the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo. So what happens is the a member of the royal family of Austria-Hungary, the next in line to the throne, visits Serbia, a territory dominant, you know, that was under the part of the Austria-Hungary uh, empire. The Serbians there, not all of them, especially a group called the Black Hand, are too happy about that. But anyway, this Archduke Ferdinand, Franz Ferdinand visits, all right, and there's a terrorist group that is about the liberation of uh, Ser uh, Serbians in Bosnia, and that would be the Black Hand. And so the Black Hand arms a few people to try to kill the Archduke. He rides in an open car with his wife. A bomb is thrown at it. It, miss, it uh, misses. It doesn't detonate, but it hits an officer or a couple of members of his security detail go to the hospital. And so the Archduke goes and continues with his plans. But then later, when they're driving, they have another place to go to. And he says, nope, I want to go to the hospital to visit um, those that were injured. And at that point, the car stops because there's no reverse. So it has to stop and then turn around. Um, and at that point, he is shot by a man named Gavrilo Princip. All right. So the conflict widens. What happens is, is that Austria-Hungary is outraged and they figure that it's Serbian nationalists who did this. And they issue a set of demands to Austria that includes Austria-Hungary taking uh, participating in the judicial process in Serbia. So imagine if we had a, a conflict with Canada, uh, and so maybe some Canadians here were assassinated or killed. And so Canada insisting that when we try the uh, people suspected of doing it, that Canada comes here and does the trial and conducts it. We would feel very, we would not like that. So Serbia agrees to most of the demands, but they don't agree to that. And so at that point, when when uh, Kaiser Wilhelm in Germany, who had, they had said, hey, we'll support you. But when they see the Serbian response, the Kaiser says, oh, great, no war. Austria-Hungary sees the response and says, war, we're doing this. Um, so they declare war in late July 1914. All right, so Austria-Hungary has German support. However, Serbia has Russian support, and Russia is allied with France, who also happens to be a rival of Germany and is still bitter about the Franco-Prussian War. So at the start, Great Britain and Italy were remained neutral, even though Great Britain was part of the Triple Entente and Italy was part of the Triple Alliance. However, when we talk about strategy, the Germans insisted on the Schlieffen Plan. It was a plan to invade France because France enters the war against them through, by marching through Belgium. The idea was that, oh, the Russians are slow to mobilize, and they weren't as slow as Germany realized, um, and that they had to attack France first, and that they would attack Russia second. So they marched through Belgium. They're basically invading Belgium. Great Britain is allied with Belgium and enters the war um, to, uh, to help Belgium. Your closure question. Do you think war could have been avoided in 1914? And we're going to watch a lot of video and do a lot of readings on this. There's a lot of great content on the Internet right now um, and just out there because of the 100th anniversary of World War One, which just uh, took place last year. And so we you want to think long and hard. Could this have been, have been, been avoided? There's you could probably argue it either way. Um, why or why not? Um, 
as far as that question. And that's our lesson recap about the early part of World War One.